long. <laughs> and uh, I hope you're doing fine, amen? Yeah. Amen. So it's just a great blessing to be here in the house of the Lord once again. And uh, uh, I would like to recognize uh, uh, Christine, teacher Christine and teacher uh, Emily. They're with us right now this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord for coming in. So, here in our text in Genesis chapter 12, verses number 1 to 4, this is a very familiar uh, uh, story. Uh, this is the call of Abraham. Actually, uh, I'm hesitating to share this message because uh, uh, when it comes to calling, I think uh, we have only, uh, I think only Pastor Joel could uh, really explain it to us. When it comes to calling, uh, since by the grace of God uh, that he already started uh, uh, three ministries in the Philippines. And uh, for me, I <laughs> but again, uh, there are different kinds of calling, amen? So I hope that this message will be a blessing to us this uh, morning and uh, hopefully it will really challenge us to keep on serving the Lord faithfully for the rest of our lives. Amen. Now here in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verses number 1 to 4. I will be reading only four verses. Now the Lord had said unto Abram. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house. And to a land that I will shew thee. Now we have to understand here that the previous uh, a covenant uh, uh, that God gave to Abraham was a promise that uh, he will be uh, the father of a great nation. Now in verse 2, And I will make of thee a, a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now, and I will bless thee, them that bless thee, and cursed him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. By the way, when you say Abram, it simply means the exalted father or high father. And verse 4, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Now, it is uh, very amazing that the... Uh, uh, surprising that uh, when God asked Abram to depart from the Chalice of Ur, he brought with him his nephew um, Lot. You know, later on in his life, now Lot became the trouble in his life. But uh, on the part of uh, Abram, of course, God was with him and uh, he was able to uh, fulfill the call of God in his life. Now, it is always a good thing to be on the right side of the righteous God. Amen? It's always on the right thing. Now, there's always a saying that there's always peace. There's always great blessing if you are in the will of God compared to a person who is out of the will of God. Now, certainly, we don't want to be on the wrong side. Right? We always wanted to be on the right side. But sometimes, because of our own um, selfish motives or, or some of our selfish desires and that's the reason why we are out in the will of God. We wanted to help God out in His plan towards us. And actually we cannot help out God. Right? Because everything is already in order by the grace of God. For without His assurances, His promises, life can get a whole lot harder. And that is true. Now, how many of those people who were outside of the will of God having a good life right now? I don't think so. Maybe they, were, they might say, yes, I have a big salary right now compared to your salary, so I am in the will of God. No, it doesn't mean that if you are, if you are earning much compared to other people, you're already in the will of God. No, life is hard enough as it is, so we need everything we can working for us and not against us. That is uh, something that... Uh, or sometimes people are doing. But again, the question here is that, what do you do to get everything working for you? What do you do? Others might say, okay, I want a good sleep. Yes? Others might say, okay, I have to take, a, uh, I have to take my vitamins. Others might say, okay, I have to eat right. 
not left. And that's just the start, right? And get a little um, exercise daily. How many of you are doing letter, uh, exercises here? Uh, I think no one is doing exercises right now. Oh, really? Oh, okay, good. That's five, huh? <laughs> We're doing exercises. But again here, the question is, but that's just what we call physical life. What we're talking about here is about our spiritual life. Now, spiritual life is more important than physical life. But again, uh, don't get me wrong. I am, we are talking here about spiritual things. But again, in our uh, uh, image or in our, in our life, we must be physically fit as well. Right? Don't get me wrong. But again, yet it oftentimes gets short drift. Now, but again, not with Abram. When God called Abram to, to leave his place, now, he followed God's call. Without knowing what will happen ahead. Well, this is the problem sometimes, doing something without knowing, if you really don't know what will happen ahead, your life. But you know what? If you really trusted God and believe God, then you don't have to worry everything and anything that will happen ahead. You will not worry. Now, again, Abram, he heard God's voice, he heeded God's call, and fulfilled his commandment. Now, you might be thinking, okay, God will never call me like he called Abraham, and God will never ask me to pack my things out and leave this place and go to another place. But again, let me tell this to you that God is calling each every one of us. We have different callings, but again, people are called all the time. And people are moving all the time. Amen? Now, the problem for many is not the calling. The problem is how we respond the call. How do we respond the call? God has a plan. He wants us to fulfill it. And it is our responding that we see God move. You know, remember, okay, during that time, or child, this is a great city, a prosperous city, and again, uh, it's not only Mesopotamia, but other, other kingdoms or empires were already existing during the time. But again, it is in the responding that we see the miracles of God. You know, those people who surrendered their life for the ministry, they can testify how God really worked in their lives. Because you know what? When God calls us, then God will do everything for your life. God will never leave you. And we have that uh, promise that it was written here in the Word of God. God will never leave us nor forsake us. But, uh, but again, we only have two weeks no work, but still we worry. And that was a good message we had last Wednesday. Don't worry, but why do we worry? Are we questioning God? Are we, uh, uh, are we asking God why these things are happening? But again, do your best and God will do the rest. That is really important. You can't really lose when God, has, when God is with you. You will not lose everything. And we have to hold on his hand and don't let it go. You know, our problem is ourselves. That's our problem. Our problem is not those people around us, those who are saying negative things about us, but our problem is ourselves. But again, if we have the hands of God with us, then be sure to hold it tightly. You know, it's the same thing as when you're holding your dog. You're walking around. It is like when you ride horse and then you hold the reins. It is like when you drive a car. You're holding the steering wheel. But again, it is in your hands. And it's also the same thing as 
as you serve God. You know, this is just a big test that we're facing right now. But I hope that nobody will be, uh, will be swayed. But I hope everybody will still focus on the, uh, uh, the things that God wanted us to have in our lives. You know, the question is, does God tell you everything? Does God tell you everything what will happen ahead? But again, faith does not mean knowing everything. Faith means trusting God for everything. Now let's proceed to Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6. A very familiar verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Do your best and God will do the rest. God's call is always challenging. Another thing, God's call is always challenging. Yeah. Often we think that if we are in the will of God, we will not experience problems anymore. Often we, th we thought or we think that if we are in the will of God, if we are in the arms of God, we will no longer experience these heartaches or pains anymore. No. A lot of testings and trials will come ahead. As you continue to, to have these journeys in your life. Again, often we think of something as challenging. We might think we can't meet the need. But again, that's not the way God sees. Amen. If that's all we do, we end up into a shaky uh, lives in serving the Lord. No vision. You're always tired, worn out, and you don't want to do anything for the Lord anymore. And we are now uncommitted. That's why if we will go to the village, be sure that we are prepared to teach the children. We are prepared to minister the people. We are prepared to uh, really teach to them the word of God. Oh, to tell you honestly, going into the village, I really don't know. What would be the response of those people there? But I try to be sure that every time we go there, we will not uh, neglect, we will not forget to continue to share to them the word of God. And to tell them that they need a Savior in their lives. Don't get tired. Be committed to what we're doing for the Lord and be faithful to Him. Yes, the work here in Cambodia is not easy. I like, to, uh, I like the work in uh, other areas or other countries. But again, it, it takes time. But again, do, we don't need to get tired. We don't need to get uncommitted to what we're doing. But instead, we have to be faithful. We have to be devoted and to be committed in serving the Lord in this place. The same thing as what we're doing in our job. Yes. But what's that, what does Philippians 14 says? Let's go there, please. A very familiar verse. I can do... All things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You can do. It's all by the grace of God. Now, the challenge here confronts our own ideas here. We have to understand that money won't save you. Your career won't save you. Your status won't save you. Faith in your job is only as a good as the economy. See? We thought that it will continue, right? For about two months, everything goes on. But after that, what happened? Amen? But the good thing here is this. God never fails. And God owns it all. You know, to tell you honestly, maybe some of you here will tell me, I, by the reason you're just boasting. But to tell you honestly, I'm really not afraid. Yes. 
We don't have jobs so far. But again, as what I'm telling you many, many times, I've been serving the Lord in this place. Never in my life I could remember that God forsaken me. Together with my family. Why? God is always faithful. God will always provide the needs of His children. Again, God is the one who created everything. God is the one who sustains us. And God knows everything about you. But it's very challenging, amen? God is always successful in doing things for our life. Take note that money will not promise you safety or security. Yes. But again, the question here is that why would we put any commit, uh, commitment ahead of what God wants to do? Again, do your best and God will do the rest. God's call is challenging. And when we commit to His call, God takes the lead and blesses. Yes, God will take the lead. That is why he told Abraham, let's go to uh, verses 1 and 2. If you commit yourself to my call, then, verses 2 and 3, and I will make of thee a great nation. If you will be asked, if you will be, uh, if God will tell you about that, huh? I will be a great nation. How? In what way? How come? There will be questions, I think. But again, for Abraham, he just listened to the call of God and take heed to that call. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And verse 3, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In a day and age when bested by interest, uh, I would say it will uh, supremely reign, God's word comes to challenge what we think about ourselves and what we do. Remember, God will always say, come and follow me. Are we really following the call of God in our lives? Now, let me entitle the message, the call. The call. Amen. Or God's call. It's up to you. How will you put the title? But don't put your name on it. Okay? Point number one. Verse one. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will shew thee. Point number one. When God calls you, let him lead you. Amen. When God calls you, let him lead you. We really have come to the time when uh, everything is really challenging and different nowadays. Well, what for how many months lay up, no jobs, no work? It's really challenging. And some of you might give up. And some of you might think, what is really happening? Huh? God is really coming soon. Again, values change with the times and they change with the culture. Everything has changed. Anytime we become enraptured by the, uh, these things around us or we might be... Uh, uh, influenced by those things that we can hear or see around us, then we are affected most of the time. Anytime we become uh, also uh, uh, influenced by the, uh, those things that uh, we, I would say, uh, that is far from the Word of God, we can hear those things. But again, if you are knowledgeable when it comes to the Word of, word of God, then you will not be swayed by these things. But again, be sure not to misplace your commitments to God. When God calls you, 
let him lead you. We have to follow through. Then, if we will do that, then we can see the hand of God working in our lives. That's why when God issued the call to Abraham, we can be certain that he did not do so lightly. Right? But again, for a people to grow in their faith, they must have a size that, or seize the task to perform it. For a disciple to grow, they must instill growth habits. Amen? If you really wanted to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God, then read, your word, read the Word of God. If you really wanted to know more about Him, then study more when it comes to the Word of God. If you really wanted to be in the will of God, then obey, be submissive, and be obedient to His will in your life. When God calls you, let Him lead you. Amen? Sounds simple, doesn't it? Amen? Sounds simple. But why doesn't it happen? Why? That's simple too. <laughs> why? For example, God will tell you, yeah, you leave today and I will uh, take you to a better place. But the question, would you do it? Others may say, it depends. It depends. Hmm? You know, there are things that are really enticing that will capture our minds and hearts because of what is happening nowadays. But again, be careful. If we believe whatever God calls us to, He will see us through. Amen? Like what He did to Abram. Like what Abram did. As well, we have to follow through. When God gives a call, He gives everything to go with it. Amen? But it's not something you will always know in advance. You will not know. Why? Everything is in the hands of God, not in your hands. As what I have said a while ago, we cannot help out the plan of God, the plans of God in our lives. Don't help Him. Just allow Him to lead you. It is a condition of faith. But again, anytime God gives a call, He challenges a person's faith. He will challenge. That's why... When it comes to commitment versus loyalty. But again, by definition here, a person of faith must be a person of accomplishment. A walker, not a talker. But most of all, they must be loyal, committed, and devoted in the service of our King. It's not easy. You know, how many of those missionaries who surrender their lives into the mission field? They don't have families in those areas. But again, they answered to God's call. And God led the way. Loyalty precedes commitment. For God will not extend a call to those who are not loyal enough to follow through on their commitments. Let's say, Lord, send me in this place. But you're not doing anything. You're just sitting down, listening. And but biting. Or saying something against the pastor. Or saying something against those preachers or some of the brethren in the church. Eh, Really? Lord, send me in this place, but you are not committed, you are not doing. Masipag ka lang sa school, pero pwede sa gawain, hindi. Na Panginoon. Di ba? Medyo nakakahiya yun. Oh. No one knows what God's purpose in your life. 
But all I know, if you're doing the will of God, then you know what is the purpose of God in your life. You will see God working in your life. And you will be aware and you will see things through a hat. So when God calls you, let Him lead you. Amen? Point number two. God never fails in His promise. God will never fail. That's why I really like this, this song. Jesus never fails. Why? Jesus never fails. When it comes to blessing, we are sure we want one. But often God does is to test us and to try us. We are really capable in doing this thing for, uh, this thing for Him. But again, the scope of His mission and ministries are not always discernible in the present. Nobody knows. That's why don't judge a person. Ah, wala na yan. Hey, who are you? Di ka naman Diyos to judge a person. You know, God is only using us to become a worthy vessel. And God can use any people around here to be in His business. Amen? Don't put an end or a period on that person. Because you might not know how will God work in his or in her life later on. Remember that God is still building us. God is still molding us to be a worthy vessel. Amen? You know what? The best thing in our life is this, that we have to understand. Allow God to break your life. Allow God to break yourself. That is your selfishness, your own self-reliance in your life. That once again, allow God to break you and let Him mold you once again to become useful in the ministry. Amen? Don't judge a person. Don't judge. Everybody can commit mistakes here. But that's it. Don't blame people around us. What we need to do is to move forward and to focus the task that God is giving to us ahead. Amen? Amen. God never fails with His promises. This is what I really like. God's purpose in every promise. What we can see here in the life of Abram. Leaving home to answer the call. He packed everything up. Amen? Left his home behind and hid it out knowing, not knowing where to go. Amen? I just may say, Lord, send me to the cock. Send me to Burakai. I want to be a missionary at Disneyland. Wala na yun. Wala, layaw na yung gusto mo. Din na mission. Amen? You know, that's why, Ibai, and I think if pastor can share this to us, marami tayong, kasi alam niya to eh. Amen? Ako, konti palang alam ko dito <laughs> when it comes to this. But I'm just sharing this to be, uh, to just, uh, I, to, to just give you some information and be a blessing. Amen? Again, so what we can see here, the purposes of uh, God had for Abraham, yet within the call of God, here we can see, I will bless you. Look at that. I will bless thee, or I will bless you to become a father of a great nation. I will bless your name. Okay? That is, you will be known as a man of integrity and of sound reputation. I will bless you by making you a blessing to others. I hope that we are blessing to others. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Others, can, they cannot answer. <laughs> others said sometimes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I will bless you. Amen? 
by blessing other nations through you. I will bless you with a land flowing with milk and honey. I will bless you with all that you need. The promise of God. Amen. So the ble these blessings came because Abraham was loyal, committed, and he really followed through faith. He walked by faith and not by sight. And this is really important. Okay. And if we want them for ourselves, we can be any different. Then Jeremiah 29 verse 11, please. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know. 29 11, please. Yes, thank you. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Amen? Amen. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil to give you an expected end. God never fails in a promise. No. Have you come into us? Have you experienced in a situation where, as if you are at the edge, and it seems that you. You're not losing hope. And then there's the time that you really kneel down, kneel down and pray to God to lead you and guide you. And then after that, you saw or you've seen the work of God in your life. Yes, there are many, many times. Amen. I'm giving an example during the pandemic. I said, we are not earning much. It's just enough for the uh, house rental. But again, God provided. Amen? Somebody called me, our teacher, I want to study English. Gusto talaga matuto ng mga English. That's a blessing. A small thing. But it's a blessing. Amen? Oh. Seven months layoff, no work. Ang tatabang yun parin, naman. That's a blessing. There you go. God never fails in His promise. Amen. Pa yun para mga mona na kayo. Pandemic pa yon. How much more kung walang pandemic? Parin na kayo bola, iba. So God never fails in a promise. So the same thing as what he is doing on those people who surrender their lives for the Lord. And lastly, God seeks unconditional surrender. God seeks unconditional surrender. Now, verse 4, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Seventy-five years old. Okay, I say it's very old. But again, during this time, okay, people were still uh, uh, strong at their age compared compared to those uh, uh, in the present right now. Right? Ako ano palang ako eh? I'm just uh, twenty-eight, pero medyo nahirapan ako minsan. Amen. But again, it's just a blessing. God seeks unconditional surrender. So unconditional surrender is often a word that the winners of war use to stop hostilities. Sometimes they are just raising the uh, white flag. Surrender. Ito yung ginawa mo sa aking oratorical piece, di ba? I won 20 pesos during that time. So if the surrender was conditional, then there would be ulterior motives attached that would prevent a rebuilding and a dedication of a brighter future. But again, take note. Unconditional surrender. In order for your enemy to, uh, to get your enemy to stop fighting, then the victor demands on unconditional 
surrender. You know, we need this. Abraham unconditionally surrendered to God. God used Abraham because he was willing to be used. That's what God needs. Willing to be used. And that's the way to win. Amen? And that's uh, the most important thing in the life of a, of a believer. We don't win by fighting. We win through surrender and obedience. That's how we win the battle. Amen? So we find ourselves by losing. We give up to go up. And it is by surrendering that we win. Now if you could remember the message that I shared to you last Sunday. If you have listened. If you did not listen, so it's up to you. <laughs> when Jacob wrestled the angel of the Lord, Amen. He really tried his best to, uh, uh, as if, during that, that scenario, as if uh, Jacob is uh, winning the uh, match or the wrestling. But actually it's not. You know, sometimes our problem is this. We really, really try to hold on as if we really can defeat God and we really can control everything in our lives. But no, we cannot. And this is the time that the angel of the Lord touched the hollow of his thigh. And he halted. And he limped. You know. The only thing that we can do in order for us to win. What? Is to surrender. Amen. Amen. But what if Abraham said, uh, did a conditional surrender? What if? Abraham might said, okay, you want me to give up the comforts of life, my home, and then the security of my job, okay? You want me to do all of these things? Okay. Thank you, Lord. I really appreciate it. But... Can you just call somebody? Don't call me. What if Abraham did that? Um, Abraham had said, Thank you, Lord, but I'm not interested. But again, in verse 4, it says here, And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Would you call that unconditional surrender or a conditional surrender? Amen. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Again, in conclusion, when it comes to spiritual life, nobody will come and say, okay, I want less. You know, people, people want more. Amen. Have you imagined that? People want more. I just would say, okay. I've heard this many, many times. Those people who are just coming here to church, I will be here to be a blessing. I've heard that many, many times. 300, 400, just enough. I've heard that many, many times. But later on, when they already have those things in their hands or in their possession, they would say, I want more. And that's the sad reality that is really happening nowadays. Amen. Looks like four hours. Just four hours. I want more. O, oh, binigyan ka ng 10 hours. Nagreklamo ka naman. Pagod, pagod. These are people, amen? This is really true. Sabi ko kay Milka dati eh. Ka, Sister Lily mo na sa hapon na. 
Pagod ako. <laughs> well, again, I, I hope we are mindful of those things. Amen? But the time, but time and again, we hear some say, okay, give me something new, okay? But that's not what God wants to hear us say. That kind of commitment doesn't last. Amen? God is different. He is seeking to bless not just you, but others through you. If you want to be a blessing to other people, then do it. And that takes commitment to walk in faith, not by sight, like Abram. And whatever he calls us to, he will see us through. All you have to do is to have faith in God, be committed to his call, and he will do miracles through you. So that's it. But again, Before we end, coming here back in Cambodia, it's about five years now, right? Five years, am I right? 2014, carry one divided by two cannot be, it will be. It's about six years now. I'm not good in science, okay? It's really a blessing. No, I don't know what you're going to think about me, but again, I never regret. Being here in this place right now. It's really challenging nowadays. But all I can see is that the goodness and the faithfulness of God in our lives. Amen. It's such a blessing. That's why what you have right now, okay, I don't know what calling you have with God right now to be in the service, to be in His vineyard. All I can say is that be faithful to it. Okay. Be faithful attending the church. Be faithful doing the business of the Lord. And be faithful and be obedient okay, to the will of God in your life. And God will do the rest. Shall we all stand? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you once again.